So writing, though, I did see on your IMDb that you've got two writing credits for episodes of a YouTube channel, Brainiac. Yeah. And there were some interesting subjects you did. Were those assigned to you? Did you pick those? How did you get into that? Absolutely. A wild chapter in my life as well was writing for these very established YouTube channels. I don't know if you saw the subs, but one of them has like 280,000 subscribers and another one had 15 million subscribers. I wrote for actually a second channel under the same parent company. I found that through a friend who was working there and they just hire based off of you apply on Indeed. Like it's a very standard application process. And I was initially just doing voiceover for these kind of funny, kind of quirky videos. After doing it for just about a year, they were like, you know, you have a knack for it. Would you ever consider writing? And I was like, absolutely. So there I was suddenly writing the scripts to these kind of comedic videos that also hopefully are informative. I, I hope it kind of hit, it hit both where it was entertaining and informative. But that oh, yeah. channel, I don't know if you also saw, has unfortunately shut down and it was a choice by the parent company based on kind of views. And also during the pandemic, I don't know if you remember, but YouTube went through a very difficult time with advertisers and they just suddenly were like, we cannot hire writers anymore. Mm. Uh, so this channel that I know had a passionate fan base uh, for those type of videos, unfortunately, they're not going to be producing content anymore. So I also was laid off during the pandemic for that job. <laughs> yeah. But if you haven't seen his episode of what happens if you wake up during surgery, it's harrowing and educational. Perfect. Right? And it is unfortunate that that channel went away because there is a lot of topics. It had a very large fan base, like what you're talking about. And they got views and views and views. Numbers I'd love to have. It was slick productions. It was great animation. And so you did a bunch of voiceovers for them too. Yeah. yeah okay. It was me and one other actor split the duties. So I'm on just about half of the videos, which is wow. pretty cool. Wow. What was that like being basically a vocal lead for a big, well-established YouTube channel? You know, it actually did kind of give me a bit of, um, I did feel the pressure. I'll say that. And I think I felt the pressure because I could see the views, which, uh, and th again, this was back in about 2018 when that channel was really putting out a lot of content. Yeah, we would make this science video. We would want it to have a tone where it's accessible, but funny and all the things a successful YouTube video has. And then it would be like, in two days, it gets 100,000 views. And I was just like, I am excited, but I also feel pressure. So I actually, you know, I've, I've never put this together, but I do cite that era of me creating content and, and doing voiceover as kind of a learning experience for just what it means for people to see your work. What is it when a hundred thousand people have seen your voice? You have to have a certain amount of thick skin for it. Like you really do have to not read the comments and just be proud of your work and put it out there. People absolutely had made fun of my voice in those videos too. And I, there was a time when I would read it. It was a bit of growth for me to just comments and all of that is one thing. Views are one thing. And also am I proud of our product? And I brought that to Girl Soup Projects now. So I unabashedly put out our project and say, I love it. Here it is. Well, that's awesome that you're a major part of a very successful channel. So you've already got a backlog of work that was imminently successful. So hopefully that gives you the confidence moving forward. That went great. So the rest of the stuff, we can make that great too. Thank you. Yeah. That's really good. But you know, even with the negative commenters, I appreciate that they watched. However long they watched it, they clicked it. I'm glad that they did. Yeah, um, but that's true. maybe I'm really optimistic or really positive about that. Yeah, uh, I wish I had a bit of more of that mindset right when I first started, because sometimes they'll say something you didn't even know that it would hurt your feelings, where they say something like, he sounds like he's 57. And I'm like, I didn't even know that I had an insecurity about that. So is that it's a like, problem? <laughs> It's something like that where you, you you really do have to separate your final project from these immediate comments that social media can have. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things to say. Oh, 